Supreme Ruler Ultimate is an old game now. Its engine and a lot of it goes back before, heck, maybe even some of its players do. However, there are some things that you can do if you are having crashes, lag, or other problems to try to resolve them. So, in this general performance guide, I'm gonna go over everything that I've seen that can go wrong with this game in well over a thousand hours, I don't know how many, of playing it and its predecessors. To start, let's go into my options. The first thing we're gonna go down to is graphics. Now, it's a lot of things that happen here. Let's start with lag. If you're experiencing lag in SRU, and I mean actual FPS lag, not the days are going by slow, but your game is lagging, there's a couple things you can do to help that. The easiest things to do that will affect probably the least of your gameplay experience comes down to, for example, turning off use 3D units in the interface. This will especially help if you're lagging when looking at your unit lists, as a lot of units being 3D rendered in this game can definitely slow it down regardless of your hardware due to the way the game runs. There's nothing you can do about it except deal with it here. So. Use 3D units and interface, turn that off if you're experiencing that. If you're looking around the map and experiencing lag on the map, then turning off use 3D terrain can certainly also be a huge help. Those jungle hexes, all of them, can be quite a strain on how well the game can run. Naturally, after that, we have the graphics resolution here, which you can turn from high to low. That would help, and the last case thing you should do would be turning down your actual resolution that will make the game run badly that will primarily help against anything GPU related that might be slowing your game down. Another thing I've seen that helps with lag as well as apparently day processing speed is if we just back out of here we go to single player for example sandbox we have all these option menus here if you click on the military settings here you will see there is units eliminated when region falls. If you turn this on, it'll make it so that every time a nation loses and gets wiped out in their war completely, any remaining units they have around the world, even if they had like a whole bunch of units, instead of going to the victor, they'll automatically just be deleted. This helps keep units off the map and out of the game's processing, which can simultaneously help with FPS lag as well as day processing speed. However, you might want those units. Taking the spoils of war might be part of your strategy, so I personally don't use this. However, let me present to you something that I would highly recommend changing. Diplomatic Merchant Marine here, it's a cool idea in theory. When enabled, which it is by default, it makes it so that if you sell units to another country, that unit will deploy in your country and the opposing nation will have to sail it there either via Merchant Marines or some other method, maybe landing craft they come to pick it up with, whatever works, to get it back to their home. Realistic and nice in a way, however, the AI doesn't do so well with this. A lot of the time, if you leave this on, the AI will sell and trade units between themselves, which they do a lot. And in doing this, you'll find the AI begins to pile up all the units instead of actually moving them to their nations. This can make the nations unsustainable. It can make them take a very long period of time to do anything because they don't have the money anymore. Their economy's buckling under the weight of all these units. And more importantly, the game processing speed and maybe your FPS will be tanking because of it as well. So I would recommend always turning this one off. This will change it so sold units are just simply teleported to the other nation's reserves and you provide in that trade the military goods required to actually repair them upon arrival. It's a little more gamey of a strategy, however, your FPS and the game processing speed and all the AI's ability to take care of their nations will very much thank you for this. Now the third and most impactful thing on game processing speed and FPS that you can do here is actually to go over to the right to game settings, not military settings, and you'll have start game without units. If you toggle this on, then no matter what scenario you start in, there will be zero base units on the map 
by default. Now everyone can make whatever units they have with whatever production they have, but nobody will actually start out with any units. This is something that is very touted as being very helpful among the Supreme Ruler community. Personally, I don't like to do this, but it has its obvious benefits for FPS and game day processing speed, so that is another option for you to use. While we're on this screen, let's also speak about game processing and how fast the days go by really quickly. This is a game where you can go through the entire timeline if you have all the scenarios, including World War One. However, there's one notable thing I need to point out to you here. Every era stacks on top of itself. That's a lot of information. That's a lot of factories. That's a lot of units. That's a lot of things that start to stack up. And resultingly, the further in time you come to the present of a scenario, the laggier the game will be no matter what. Not just in FPS, but especially in game processing speed. When playing the 2020 scenario, personally, my game becomes unplayable within the first decade due to the days taking forever to pass by. However, as we go back in history to the Cold War, World War II, and World War I, I essentially almost never run into this problem. Like, I'd have to play for at least half a century to really start running into this stuff. Maybe not as long if I leave Diplomatic Merchant Marine on instead of turning it off, and especially when taking into account all the other things I can do to help, as mentioned before. But that is just a general tip. If you want a less laggy game, then pick an earlier scenario. They will run better. Now, with that, we'll go back over to the main menu and to my options and take a look at more of these events. Every other setting on the graphics player options that I did not cover, such as active window focus, such as video driver buffer fix, such as running in windowed or not and native resolution. You may know what all these things mean already, you may not. However, just note if you're having any freezing or crashing in the game, these are all the settings you want to experiment with. Try some of these settings that you're not using. Try turning off some of the ones you are using. I have had, for example, turning on active window focus, experimental, save me from buttloads of crashes and making the game actually playable for me. However, someone that I played with, turning this on, got all the same crashes I was having prior, and having it off was the way he fixed the game for himself. So this is more of a really just experiment and figure out what works with your PC. It is worth a mention that you should probably not have the show grid outside line of sight on under the map settings here. If you are having lag and in the game, you should simply not show the hex grid at all if you also wish to reduce your lag like that. That's more of an inside the game thing, but this is a good prompt for me to bring it up. Other than this, I have pretty much covered everything you can do to help your game. However, there's a notable mention that if you are playing multiplayer and you experience a lot of desyncs, for example, that is kind of a performance thing as well. So two tips I have for you. Number one, make sure the game is playing on normal speed as soon as possible, maybe even higher if you can sustain it. Keeping it paused at the beginning while you load up a bunch of things you want to do, that's just going to make it desync and it's going to guarantee you'll never get past the beginning of the game. So that's an important tip. There is also, if you go to your files here, you'll see autosave. Autosaving is good. Autosaving is important. However, if you're playing with a multiplayer group, I'd highly recommend that only the host has autosave on as I have commonly seen the game desync on autosaves when multiple players have it on, as opposed to this issue pretty much entirely disappearing when all the other players except for the host turns this off. And finally, multiplayer specific tip. If you are experiencing major freezes or lag in the game's processing speed in multiplayer and only multiplayer, a very important tip is to make sure everybody that you're playing with is in the same region. First off, especially making sure that their region is the same on Steam. That can also affect things. And also, making sure everybody is running on Ethernet, not Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is not capable of transmitting the amount of data that this game requires to be transmitted. So your game can freeze up in multiplayer and cause massive slowdowns if you are running Wi-Fi, 
even if just one player is running Wi-Fi. So try to play with those that are geographically close to you and try to play with those that have Ethernet only. Wi-Fi players can quite commonly make the game completely unplayable. Now that's not all of them, that's not true for everyone, but it's happened to me like 99 out of 100 times, that often. <laughs> with that, I've gone over pretty much all of the bugs, crashing, performance problems of lag and game processing speed and desync that I can think of. So I hope that this has been helpful to hopefully resolving some of your problems or teaching you a new thing that you could do just in case if you have any other ideas for guides or videos you'd like to see me make on Supreme Ruler or any other games like this, let me know in the comments below. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.